In this video, we're going to take a look at the hypergraph. The hypergraph gives us a schematic view of the nodes in our scene file. Maya is a node-based editor. This means that everything we create is a separate node. And a lot of times, the nodes that we create have other nodes that make up the single node. Let's take a look at an example here, and we'll just create our primitive sphere. And if I scroll over here into the channel box, you can see these different headings here. We have P sphere, P sphere shape, and polysphere. Each one of those are separate nodes. I'm going to switch to the attribute editor and we can see these a little bit better. Each of these tabs are those separate nodes. Now we can look at these specific nodes inside of the hypergraph. Let's open that up. That's a separate window. Go to Window, Hypergraph. Now notice there are two different types of hypergraphs here that we can open. Ultimately, they all lead to the same thing. Let's start first with the hypergraph hierarchy. This is going to be our top level hypergraph view. We can see here we get P sphere 1. And it appears that there are no other nodes within our scene. Let's take a look first at how we can navigate in our hypergraph. Because it's a separate window, we can change the size of that window so that we can see more of our nodes a little bit easier. To maneuver inside of the hypergraph, we use our normal camera controls. Alt and the middle mouse button allows us to pan. Alt and the right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. We can also use A to frame all, as well as F to frame selection. Now to expose more of the nodes that make up our scene, we're going to go to Options, Display, and check Hidden Nodes. This will immediately bring up all of our camera nodes. Though so each of our cameras, our perspective, top, front, and side, all have separate nodes as well. Decrease the size here a little bit. Now, as we saw inside of the attribute editor and the channel box, there are other nodes attached to our P sphere node. Let's go to Options, Display, and we can expose those nodes by checking Shape Nodes. Now I have P sphere 1 as well as P sphere shape 1. Notice that our camera nodes also have individual shape nodes. The top node here that we see is the transform node. These are my transformation values. This is all on P sphere 1. Underneath there is my shape node. This is the node that actually holds the geometry. So this here is the transform node. It simply locates the geometry, whereas this guy here, the shape node, is the node that actually makes up the surface or the object itself. Now we still have another node that is in our inputs. This is polysphere 1. And this is our construction history node. To take a look at it inside of our hypergraph, we can look at the hypergraph connections. We can access this through this icon right here, which will bring us to our input and output connections. Clicking on this is the equivalent of going to Window, Hypergraph, Connections. And when we do this, we do want to make sure that we have an object selected, and it will expose the input and output connections of what we have selected. So I'm going to choose P Sphere 1, and then click on Input and Output Connections, and that's going to explode that out into another view and allow me to see all of the inputs that are coming into that top transform node. So these are all of the connections that make up this object. This here is that construction history node. And notice I can move all of these around if I don't like the configuration. I'm just using my left mouse button and dragging. So here's my construction history. And then I have a line that shows me the connection that is the output of that construction history going into the in mesh attribute of the shape node. This is telling me that this object here or this node here is making up this surface shape. If I were to delete my history, this polysphere node 
would go away. It's an input. It is a history node. So if we do edit, delete by type, history, boom. That construction node now goes away. We don't need it anymore. We have our sphere. It's no longer in the picture. But now to go back to our normal hypergraph setting, we can choose the icon right next to it to go back to the scene hierarchy. And then that takes me back to our normal hierarchy view. The hypergraph will show us all of the nodes of our scene, and we can toggle back and forth between an individual node and look at the input and output connections of nodes that we have selected, or we can see that top view of all of the nodes in our scene, and that's the top level views. So we're not seeing any of our construction history nodes in this scene hierarchy here. I'm going to create just a couple of other objects here. Let's just create a cube. I'm going to choose Control D just to duplicate that cube. And let's take a look at some of the other things we can do inside of our hypergraph. So first, I'll select all three of those, and we can choose input and output connections. It will expose all of them. Here are the transform nodes. These are the top level nodes. And over here, I have all of the history and construction nodes all going into the proper node. So we have our cube, our sphere, and our second cube. Now, this guy right here is just the initial shading group. This is just being assigned so that we can see these objects. It's a default node. You can't delete it. You really can't do anything with it, so we can just basically ignore it. Let's go back to our scene hierarchy. Now, if I want to do parent-child relationships here, I can by middle mousing on a node. I don't have to select it. I can just middle mouse and drag and drop to another node. Notice that it automatically highlighted it now. I did not select that. So again, I can middle mouse and just drag it in my hypergraph and I can put it anywhere. So we'll make it a child of P cube one. And now I have this little hierarchy of cube to cube to sphere. Now to break that connection, I'll middle mouse and just drag into empty space. And once again, I do not have to have anything selected. Just middle mouse and drag. Now the shape nodes, you cannot break off. I can't take those and make them a child of something else. We can only do the transform node. Again, because that transform node is holding the position of our objects. Now, since the hypergraph can show us everything in our scene, the hypergraph can get really busy. We can end up with a lot of nodes inside of here, hundreds to even thousands of individual nodes. So we have a couple of different things that we can do to keep our view to a minimum. I'm going to make these children again, but before I do, I'm going to go to Options, Display, and turn off Shape Nodes. So just right there, that really condenses my view. Now it is just showing me the entire node as one combined node of a transform and of a shape node. Nothing has changed on the objects themselves, it's just a different view. Okay, so if I choose options display shape nodes, then it breaks it out into that transform and shape node. With that off, all I get is the singular node. And let's parent these up. And if I have a really long chain here, it's going to extend all the way down, but we can double click on the top node and it will collapse it. So again, that can save us a lot of screen space. And to expand that back out, I can right click on the node and either choose expand or expand all. And the difference here is that because I have two levels, it'll expand just to the first level. We'll go back, I'll choose collapse, same thing as double clicking it. And if I choose expand all, then it will expand everything in there. Now we also have different layouts. By default, we're in an automatic layout. And let's break these out here again. And what the automatic layout does is it automatically places your nodes in order. And it does so by the type. You can see here that it's all geometry. I've got all my cameras first, and then it goes to geometry. If we click this icon here, we can then go to a freeform layout. And freeform layout allows me, like we saw with the hypergraph connection view, I can grab all of these nodes and move them 
anywhere I want. So again, if we're working on a very complex scene, we may want to arrange these ourselves so that we can make more sense of it. If you click and go back to the automatic layout, it will arrange them, but you will not lose your freeform layout. So if I click back on this, all of my positions are still there, okay? And it actually will retain all of those movements that I made. And you can see too, in the channel box, we get another node. We get a hypergraph layout node, and that hypergraph layout node is maintaining the position of these nodes. The hypergraph is an incredibly powerful tool, and I recommend having the hypergraph open or at least check the hypergraph often. We can see a lot of common mistakes there, and we can see a lot of extra nodes that we might not even knew existed, and those things can cause us problems from time to time. So it's a good way to clean up your scene. It's also a good idea to use the hypergraph so you can get used to seeing all of the various nodes and understand what they do. The bigger your scenes are, the more nodes you're going to end up having inside of the hypergraph. It can get confusing very quickly. I consider the hypergraph kind of the hub of Maya, so it's very important to get used to using the hypergraph.